Hello, a warm welcome to the continuation of our interview segment with Allah Ishwai Bumosa, a veteran broadcaster and season administrator. In our last edition, he told us about his journey in life and work experience, but today he'll be telling us why he later left the broadcast industry to Jakarta State Company, including his likes and dislikes. I am Avoy Umwogu, your guide. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, and the program is the Senior Citizen Outcome, where we talk to our leaders in the society, especially if you are age 60 and above. This program is meant for them, to engage them, and also to have enough words for the next generation, even to come. So I'm employing you now, wherever you are and you're watching this, please listen and pick those things you know you need to live a better life. That is the essence of watching this program. I am still a boy. We are still on the program. Senior citizen Africa with Alaji Shai Musa. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, before we went on break, we were talking about moving from uh, broadcast industry to, to industry. another uh, industry entirely. In fact, quite different from broadcast industry. And uh, from your profile, you joined the Ajakuta State Company. Was it immediately after you left Ajakuta, uh, the broadcast industry? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I was doing very well in the broadcast industry. Uh, my movement from the broadcast industry took me by surprise. I was uh, sitting down one day doing my work in the studio when somebody came with a message to me to say that I had a message from the then Minister of Steel by name, Paul Unongo, late Paul Unongo, minister, the first Minister of Steel in Shagali government. And then I said, message? Say, what type of message? I don't know Paul Unongo, I've never met him, you know. And uh, they said the message is that Paul Unongo said I should meet him at Hamdala Hotel. At, uh, so he gave his city a particular time. And I was surprised. I said, ah, I've never met the minister. Mm. Uh, there's nothing connecting me and him. Um, so I did not honor the invitation. Because it is not that I saw the minister face to face. Mm. He sent somebody. Then, to my surprise, the following day, the minister himself came to Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria wow. and confronted me. I was surprised. I had never met him before. But luckily for me, he too went to my colleague, government colleague, Kefi. So, uh, <laughs> when he was getting angry that ah, he sent somebody to me and uh, I had read his profile before, before, and I knew he went to government colleague, Kefi. So, to assuage him and say, please, I am sorry, I had to say, ah, Honorable Minister, who am I? I'm not even good enough to be your father. Uh, you left Kefi before I went there. Immediately I said that he knew that I went to Kefi. He said, oh, oh, you want to go and call a Kefi? Okay, you're my boy. No problem. No problem. <laughs> and that was that. And he said, actually, the reason why he was looking for me is that the steel uh, industry uh, that President Shagali has been very serious about the steel industry. He's been on the drawing board for a long time, and the people recruited to do the work were all the time in Lagos. They would not come to the mm. site. And President Shagali wanted the steel industry to take off mm. during his time. And uh, he has given him the assignment. Mm. And that uh, that's why, instead of him, that there are certain crucial positions mm. he will want the people who are going to occupy those positions to be people that are known for uh, effectiveness. People that can get, get to the roads. Mm -hmm. And that while he was discussing with a large spectrum of people, my name kept coming in. Mm -hmm. And that's why he had decided to come and headhunt for me. That was my first time of hearing the word headhunt. Mm -hmm. Headhunt means you go for somebody and say, look, I want you to come and do this job for me. Instead of the person writing an application. Mm. I didn't write application for that job. Wow. He came to me and then I said, I, I, I said, ah, the Honorable Minister, oh, 
I don't know anything about uh, steel industry. I'm not a metallurgist. I'm not a geologist. He said, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll give you a job that you know how to do. All we want is we want effectiveness and people that can achieve results. Deliver. Deliver. So I said, okay, what is this? Sir? He said, where do you think you can deliver? And I said, okay, if you put me in administration, he said, yes, that's critical. Okay, I put you in charge of personnel. Mm. If you if you employ, if you uh, if you assist and employ the right type of people, the project will take off. Mm. But if you don't employ the right type of people, then the project will mm. still be a stalemate. Mm. Then he said, okay, uh, let me see your CV, and I will go and discuss with my uh, officers, and we will see the type of position. Mm we can slate you for. And after that, you'll have a, a, a word with me again. And if I consider you suitable, I'll give you the position. Mm. And the position he was having in mind for me was Assistant General Maldia Personnel. Mm. OK. And within 48 hours, he got back to Lagos, called me. He said, we are thinking of giving you Assistant General Manager Personnel. And I said, OK, sir, Honorable Minister, thank you very much, sir. Say no, we should thank you because uh, we have come to dislodge you from the work you were enjoying before. Uh, that the work you are going to do now, you go to Ajakuta, it's a bush place. In any case, it's your area. Mm. So you should be able to uh, sacrifice, you know. So I said, okay. So within a very short mm. time, I came to, I, I got a letter of employment, went to see Ajakuta, then came back to Kaduna. And uh, Believe me, there were more than four send-offs arranged in my honor. Mm. There is a great friend of mine by name, late Al-Haji Abdurrahman Michika. He was the managing director, he was one time managing director of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. Later on, he became the managing director of Nigerian Television Authority. Mm. He was a great friend of mine. He organized a send-off for me. When I was living in Kaduna, he was in Kaduna then. Then, uh, late Dai Rumodibo, who was my direct boss, also organized a send off for me. Then, the third send off was organized by my friend Alaji Isa Uzi Salami. Yeah. So, people all over the country, they were showing it on television. Yeah. So, people all over the country knew that I was moving from yeah. Kaduna yeah. and going to. Uh, that's how I left. It wasn't planned, it just yeah. took me by surprise. And then, I went to Ajakuta, landed in Ajakuta, and we got to work. Wow. And how was the experience in Ajakuta? My experience in Ajakuta, well, uh, up to today, the thing has really not taken off. But during our time, I went there in 1980. In 1983, Ajakuta was producing rods. Ajakuta was produced mm. rods in 1983 and then President Shehu Shagari came to commission the wire rod mill in 1983. It was producing rods and some of my people, uh, some of my classmates like late James, uh, James, uh, James, I, I've forgotten the son name. He's from Isonlu in, if you are going to Kaba. He was building his house uh, in the sun there, he came with a, a, a trailer and we sold rose to him mm. in 1983. Mm. So it actually worked for some time. Then problems came in. Mm. And it is a big story if you ask me why it has not been working. Mm. There is a reason behind it. You want to ask me? Mm. Uh, if you care to tell us. Yes. People are surprised that since time in Memorial and Jakarta steel company has failed to take off. Yes. Well, initially the idea of a Jakarta steel company was conceived during the time of Balewa government, mm. the first civilian government. The reason why the idea was conceived was that we had the raw material. Yes. Dolomite, iron ore. 
if, if you're traveling from Okene to Abuja, and from between Okene and Lokoja, uh, all those hills, they contain all those, uh, you know, dolomite, iron ore, uh, what is this thing that they use in making a cement? Limestone. Limestone. Thank you very much. Limestone. Limestone. Uh -huh. You know, these are three very important elements, you know, mater raw material that they use. And this area contains them, mm -hmm. you know. So, when the Bedell government wanted to set up a steel industry, the Western countries, mm -hmm. the Western countries, when I say the Western countries, mm -hmm. America, Britain, mm -hmm. France, they said no, it will not work. But that was not true. Mm -hmm. Russia got to know about it mm -hmm. and Russia said, look, Nigeria, if you want to uh, set up a steel industry and be producing steel, your raw materials are good, we'll come and do it for you. At that time, there was this Cold War between America and what they used to call mm. communist countries. Yes, so they, they always like to undo one another, you know. So it's all right. Since Russia said our raw materials are very good, mm. and Western countries said that our raw materials are no. not good, so we gave it to Russia. That's why uh, TPE, a Russian uh, steel uh, industry, came to Ajakuta mm. to set up the Ajakuta. It was set up and it's, it was working initially. Exactly. And but since, exactly. since, since the Western countries did not want it to work, they did everything possible to ensure that it will not work. You know how powerful they are? Mm. Uh -huh. They will use all types of means. They can even use people that have been employed to ensure that Ajakuta it's still was working. Sure. They will use some people, they will invite them mm. for a conference uh, uh, in their country. Mm. And while in the hotel, they will go there and say, Look, where is your account? They put a lot of money there. And then they will say, Look, go back and say that uh, steel country is not viable in Nigeria. And all those people, these things actually happen. Those people will come back to the country and be talking from mm. the other side of the map, you know. So it is that thing that is still happening. If the Western country mm. says they don't want something, okay. <laughs> you have to work two times more to make it work. Wow. That is the main reason why it has not been working till date. It's either they use our people mm. or they use other means that are available to, to, to sabotage it. In fact, in fact, I told you that I visited the, uh, the mm. president sometime you know mm. and when uh, the, 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 when i mentioned this thing to him he said if you think it can work go and put up a paper bring it to me it's so sad that he died i did mm. i put up a paper uh when i met the president and i told him he said well if you think there's anything that can be done well show it to me and i'll see what i can do uh, I put up a paper. Here is the paper. You can see why the Dakota uh, was sabotaged and who sabotaged it. You can see my picture there and the picture of Mr. President at that time, late Moro Musa Yaradula. And uh, I presented this paper to the Permanent Secretary, uh, Ministry of Steel, then, late. Um, Abubakar Sadiq Azare from Bauti State, you know. But then, what happened? About a month later, Abubakar, the Prime Secretary, phoned me and said that Mr. President was ill and that they had flown him outside the country. And I said, well, we prayed for him. But unfortunately, mm. he came back very, very ill. Some people said that he came back half dead. Some people even claimed that he died and they got his cut. But, but the thing is, he died. Mm, and that's sad. why it ended. Well, here is the paper I prepared and submitted, uh, showing points that can be considered for the revival of a Jakuta. But unfortunately, 
Mr. President died, and that was the end of it. If, if anybody considers it still very relevant, well, I can resubmit it and uh, see what happens. We hope that uh, we will be able to have a headway in a Jakuta Steel Company, especially this point you have made. I pray our minister, the minister of steel, is from Kogi State. Mm. I pray he's watching this. And I pray he's connecting to you so that this information you have, having worked there at the early, as, uh, early build up of Ajakuta, you will know the secret, you know what's happening there. I pray you'll be able to locate you and we get these relatives to enable Ajakuta to work again. And I know Mr. President is ready to make Ajakuta work. And God will help him. Thank you, Thank sir. You. And I, well, let's uh, digress a bit. Growing up as an uh, adult now, maybe in the course of your, your lifestyle, um, growing under the, your, the roof of your parents, is there any moment you think, ah, I've done something wrong, and you're like, sometimes you still remember it, you, you're just like, ah, blame yourself for it. Is there any moment like that? Well, on the contrary, there's never been a time. On the contrary, the core values of life at that time, and now are different. What I mean by core values, what are the things that make the people of a country uh, great? What are the things that make a country great? Take for example, I attended a very, very renowned secondary school in which during our time when we were students, uh, it is the white people that were our teachers. 90, 90, over 95% of our teachers were white people. Mm. And there are certain core values they believe in and instilled in us. Such core values as integrity. Mm. You have to be, we were trained to be people of integrity. We were also trained to be people that are honest. This honesty was frowned upon, you know. Mm. We were also trained to be become people that are patriotic, people that will render selfless service mm. to the nation, people that will uh, give respect to the elders and give respect to constituted authorities. Mm. Unlike the present situation of things, when all the young elements, all they want is to cut corners and become rich overnight. Mm. That wasn't the way we were brought up. So I have no regret whatsoever as to anything I passed through in the past uh, and I am regretting that mm. had I known. On the contrary, I am just uh, having a feeling that, oh, I wish all the core values of my time mm. were brought back, you know, so that Nigeria can mm. be a better Nigeria. People of my time, people of Yaradua's time, if you look at the government of Yaradua, Yaradua was an outstanding head of state. It is because of the core values uh, training we received in our college then. You know, you cannot be late to the class or even to go to the dining hall to eat. If you did that, you will be punished. Irrespective of who was your father, we did not uh, bother about that. Even the great Sadauna, of Sokoto, who was the most powerful person in Nigeria at that time. He, there is a son of his, a son of the Prime Minister Balewa, whom the Sadona was the one bringing up, known as Bala Abubaka. I don't know whether he's still mm. alive. Bala Abubaka was sent from Balewa College to Kefi so that they can instill discipline. Him. This was 1964, mm. and I was his. How I st can still remember is that I was his first room prefect. I was the room prefect of the room they brought him to, mm. and they said that they brought him from Zaria, so that uh, Zaria is in the town. You cannot run to the town to go mm. and uh, 
between uh, Kefi was a bush place, and if you did anything, the white people would deal with you, mm -hmm. you know. So the core values of that time and the core values of the present times are different. That's why we're not having it right in this country anymore. What do you, know. do you think is missing? Is it from the parents, the government, or the society? Well, what is missing starts from the parents. Take for example, when I was in the primary school, the teachers were kings. The teacher can do, they could do and undo. The teacher will discipline you, the primary school teacher or secondary school teacher will discipline you and nobody can ask questions. But today, mm. what happens? The parents will go and uh, fight for their mm. students. I even understand that uh, some parents do go to write examination uh, uh, exams for, for their children, which is very, very sad. Uh, these are the p things that are dragging Nigeria mm. down. Nigeria would have been a great country like Malaysia. Malaysia came to learn a lot of things from Nigeria, but yes. Malaysia is far, far ahead. Of hey, you know, you know. So it started right from the the, 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 the the family level, and then it grew to secondary school level, where students will be beaten, lecturers, teachers. Ah, no, 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 no. Things have gone here, wire, you know, and uh, it's a pity. I don't know, I cannot tell you, unless we go back to revive the core values of Easter years. I don't see how anything can be done. Mm. For example, for example, before, before, if you suddenly you owned anything and people didn't know the source of your money, if you owned a vehicle, Ah, they will ask you, my friend, how did you get the money? Mm -hmm. eh? uh -huh. But nowadays, if you want to be a pool and you go to a village, they will help you. They say you made it. Eh? These are the things we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I would agree a little, and okay. uh, mm -hmm. we will come back after the break. We will continue the last lap. Right. Stay with us. Okay. So this history is more than knowing the date and day of significant happening. Also, listening to those with knowledge will do us better. When we listen to others, it provides a personal opportunity to exercise our imagination, to understand life in another dimension. Place and culture as well help us to understand the world as it exists now. I am Avoy Umogu. I will be your guide on this program Citizen a program where we will have the elders as our guests to engage, motivate, and to educate us. Welcome back. So we are still with our guest. We have listened to him. You know that this man is a man you should listen to. He's a disciplined man. Through his antecedents, you, of course, agree with me that he has really done well in all his scopes of life. And he's still doing it. He's giving us ideas. He's giving us wisdom. He's directing us what to do. And he's still Alaji like Shuaibu Musa. He's talking to us about his lifestyle and how the life of the youth nowadays can be better. How I wish the core values he has talked about. <coughs> of the old can be revived and to start from the parents please i am also a parent you are watching how, how much do you know your child how much do you know about him or her do you fight because the teacher maybe beat or discipline him or her do you go to school and harass them just because you're a rich man or you're a rich woman somewhere and nobody your child is untouchable. That is why we are having these crops of children these days. But God will help us if we are ready for God to help us. Thank you for watching and I hope you are inspired. Until next week, we will have the remaining part of the interview. Please stay positive to attract positive things.
I am Avoy Omogu. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our social media handles to always get our notifications once we are live. See you next week.